Christ, you are God, who alone gives light to our day. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him, who build the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we gather together on this 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We celebrate this Mass together with you as we come together on this the Lord's Day to be with the Lord, who gives us this time to refresh us and to lift us with his grace. This is the September 11th, something that we remember in our country that happened many years ago, and uh, we remember all those who, who died, all those whose lives were affected in that tragedy on the September 11th uh, tragedy. But also, during this Mass, we pray for all of our parishioners here at Our Lady of Las Vegas, and also for all of you who join us uh, over social media and are praying with us. And all your intentions we bring before the Lord. Let us now prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus in this Eucharist as we acknowledge our sins and as we ask God to grant us mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, and the greatness of your compassion wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. I will rise and go to my Father. A clean heart create for me, O God and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will rise and go to my Father. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. I will rise and go to my Father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has made me abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of this I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the king of ages, incorruptible, invincible, 
the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner, who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him anything. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it, and let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I have served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him 
you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always, and everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we certainly have a lot coming at us in the scriptures this Sunday, but the message is clear. It is about the incredible mercy that God has on all of us who are his wayward children. This whole thing begins with the Pharisees and the scribes whom Jesus very often sparred with. They argued with them a lot because they had a whole different way of looking at things. They believed in following the letter of the law, and unless you followed the letter of the law, you were not righteous, and God wouldn't have anything to do with you. So you had to, you had to do everything just right in order for God to love you and for, for you to even be associated with God. And that's why the Pharisees often separated themselves with what they called sinners and tax collectors and, and that type. But Jesus came to dispel that myth that somehow they came to accept and believe as being true. But if it's not true at all, Jesus himself came. I didn't come to save the righteous. I came for those who are in need of mercy and forgiveness. I came for those who are sinners. It's not the well, people who are healthy who need the doctor. It's the sick people that do. And that's why I have come into this world. And so he gave us examples of, of how heaven rejoices when, when a person converts and comes back to the Lord. We're all sinners. We're all wayward people. At one time or another, many times we fall away from the Lord. We lose our way. But when we find our way back, we come back to the Lord. There is a celebration in heaven. Just like the, the shepherd that lost one of his sheep, left the 99, went and searched for that one sheep, or the woman who lost her coin and went to search for that coin. Jesus is showing this is how God diligently waits and looks for us and wants us to come back. Whatever the reason is that we've, we've been lost or we, we left or whatever the reason was that we sinned, God searches for us and continues to call us back to himself. And then we have this incredible parable that is known as the prodigal son. But really, the hero of this parable is not the son, but the merciful father. The son leaves, he goes out to sow his wild oats, so to speak, becomes bored with his life, he wants something new and interesting and exciting, so he thinks, and he goes out and he squanders everything. But finally, when he finds himself in dire need, that he doesn't have anything to eat, he feels lost, he realizes how good he had it in his father's house. But he also realizes that what he did was wrong. And Jesus points that out, how, how the Pharisees think that, the, that boy, I, I can't go to my father and be treated as a son anymore because I did this, and there's certainly I can't be accepted back as a son. But at least if I go back, I'll have a roof over my head and I'll have food to eat. I'll try to be one of the servants in the household. Well, Jesus, in explaining this parable, shows that when the son came back, he got the surprise of his life, that his father was keeping vigil for him, waiting for him. And when he saw him, he ran to him, embraced him, and told the servants to bring the finest robe and put him on and his sandals on his feet and killed the fattened calf to celebrate with a feast for the son that he had lost through sin, through, has come back. And again, another reason for celebration. But then there's the other part of this story with the, the elder son who, who felt that he was treated unjustly by his father. This son of yours goes out there and he goes and wastes everything that you gave him and then he comes back and you celebrate, you kill the fattened calf. Look, I've been with you all this time and I've been faithful 
and what have you given me to celebrate with? And the father's just kind of scratching his head and saying, what are you talking about? Son, everything that I have is yours. You're here with me all the time. If you don't take advantage of it, if you don't appreciate it, well, then there's something that needs to be, uh, needs to be thought about. But everything that I have is yours. You're here with me. But this son, of, this, this brother of yours who was lost has returned. And it is right that we celebrate his coming back, his being a part of us again. So we do celebrate. Now, Jesus never tells us whether the elder son comes into the house or not. And maybe he did that for a reason so that we would have to write the end of that story. If you were that elder son, would you feel that you had been treated badly or unfairly, that someone who had done something terribly wrong gets this great welcome, this, this, uh, this feast to celebrate with, while you yourself, who, who consider yourself faithful all the time, seem to be neglected and not getting anything special? Jesus wants us to write the end of that story. And the question is, would you go in to celebrate? Or would you remain away, angry and upset? That's a question that we all have to answer for ourselves. And probably it's a good idea that Jesus didn't uh, end that story in the way that that we we would know. Because he leaves it up to us to answer that question. But... The important thing is, in all of this, is to remember that God loves each of us. That no matter how sinful we may be, and we all are, that we always have recourse to God, who loves us, who keeps vigil to call us back, and who is ready, willing, and able to welcome us back when we come to our senses, as this younger son did, and return to the Father, that he will welcome us with open arms. Heaven will be very happy because every time, the, every time a, a person converts and comes back, there's a party thrown in heaven. So anytime we come back, the angels are very happy because there's a party being celebrated in your honor, in all of our honor. When we, when we finally do come to our senses and return home and find ourselves wrapped in the love and the mercy of our Heavenly Father. You know, there was, a, there was a, a Sunday school class that was talking about this parable of the prodigal son, and, and the teacher was asking the question. He, she said, uh, you know, at the end of this story, uh, there's, a, there's a situation going on here. And she, so the teacher asked, well, who is it that ended up in the worst situation at the end of this parable? So thinking that the children would answer it was the older son who had that dilemma, one little boy raised his hand and said, well, I know who ended up in the the worst situation. It was the fatted calf. Please rise now, everyone, and join with me as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for men and for salvation. came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is especially attentive to those in need, and so with great confidence we address the Lord with our needs and the needs of all 
our brothers and sisters in Christ. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that like the Good Shepherd, he may seek his lost sheep and help them return to the fold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been given authority to enact, enforce, or apply the law, that they may be guided by ideas of justice and mercy in carrying out their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who perished in the attacks of September 11, 2001, and for all those who continue to suffer from that event, that they may find comfort in the support of loved ones and in the loving embrace of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grandparents here and around the world, that they may know the love and appreciation of their children and grandchildren. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those with estranged family members or friends who have fallen away, that they may be ready to welcome them back into their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may know the comforting presence of friends, family, and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions listed in our community book of prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us in faith, that they may be brought into the peace of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the parishioners and viewers from whom this Mass is offered, and for all our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O merciful God, grant us the grace to trust that you will never give up on us, no matter how much we turn away, no matter how far we wander. Hear us in your mercy and grant the prayers we make through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I just call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity 
made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, Father, in company with the choirs of angels and saints, we praise you and with joy we now proclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, our auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all our deceased parishioners of Our Lady of Las Vegas Parish, all those who perished in the 9-11 tragedy. Welcome them, Father, into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us share with one another now a sign of peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
of everlasting life if I should turn from you to whom would I go here I am Lord I come to do your will make of me what Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Thank you so much, everyone, as always, for being with us and praying with us and celebrating our faith in this Eucharist on this 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Thank you to our ministers, to Teresa for being our lector, and Mikhail for manning our cameras, and David for providing us with wonderful music uh, during this Mass. We thank you so much. We, and uh, again, you, your presence among us is, is great, and we thank you for being with us and the support that you, that you also give to our, our parish. And we can continue in our ministry, this ministry and many, many others. Your, your uh, support is greatly, greatly appreciated. As we go forth, we remember that the Lord is always with us, no matter, no matter what happens, he is with us, even as we remember the, the tragedy that happened 21 years ago, um, at the events of 9-11, it was a horrible, horrible thing that went on, but um, we continue to move forward, and uh, with, with the Lord's help and the Lord's strength that we are able to do so. If anyone is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on today or this week, our, our best wishes to you. And also, if you are carrying a heavy burden, something weighing heavy on your heart and soul, please know always that our prayers go with you. So let us go forth, nourished by our Lord. Let us go forth with his grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. Build the city of God.